in our next problems, we'll focus on the items that will actually come out in the board exam. Because when we are dealing with thin walled pressure vessels, we are actually usually considering some extent of hydraulics or fluid mechanics. Now in here, we have a water tank 22 feet in diameter, so that will be this dimension. Now I mean this is the inner diameter, and then it is made from steel plates that are 1 half inches thick or 0.5 inches so this is 0.5 inches and then we have to find the maximum height to which the tank may be filled if the circumferential stress is limited to 6000 psi now the specific weight of water is 62.4 pounds per feet cube now first we have to find the maximum height assuming uniform pressure which is what we usually deal with in mechanics however if you are to use the concepts in fluid mechanics the actual pressure distribution of water is triangular and so we'll also solve the height considering this pressure now first, we know that the tangential stress will govern our design. And so that means that we are interested in the tangential stress in which we will cut along the longitudinal line so that we can reveal the hoop stress or circumferential stress. And so if we will cut our tank in half along the diametral plane, we will have this figure. This is now our vessel. And so in fluid mechanics, the pressure of water is equal to gamma multiplied by the height if the pressure is uniform. Now what is gamma? Gamma right here is the unit weight, which is a unit of force, usually Kn, divided by a unit of volume. So this is m cubed. By the way, gamma is equal to W divided by volume. That's why this is Kn and this is M cubed. And then height right here is a dimensional unit or a distance. So let's say our height is meters. And so if we have Kn M cubed multiplied by M, our resulting unit will be Kn and then this will cancel, this will become squared and then this will be removed we have Kn per m squared. Now notice that this unit is a unit of stress or pressure because we have a unit of force over a unit of area. And so that's why in our calculation of P for the internal pressure, we'll use gamma H. And so take note of this one. Now our circumferential stress is 6,000 PSI. So that's our tangential stress. And then the specific weight of water or this is also the unit weight, is 62.4 pounds per feet cubed. So that will be our gamma, so 62.4 pounds per feet cubed. Now first, we have to assume uniform pressure. Now what do you mean by uniform pressure? When we say uniform pressure, it just means that the pressure distribution is rectangular, such that it will be uniform over the whole area. Now note here that the pressure is actually lateral, and so it will act on this area, this shaded portion. And so if you are to draw the pressure distribution, which is first uniform, it will be like this. Now this is assuming uniform pressure. Now the value of this stress because this is our force acting over the area this will be gamma times h in which this is our height. However in actuality our water is not fully filled. It actually has a certain height and then we are only to find the height to which this stress is not exceeded. But for the purpose of the demonstration let's just actually consider this. Now if this is gamma h then this will be 62.4 pounds per feet cubed multiplied Applied by the height so this is our P. Now since the circumferential stress is given we will actually use PD over 2T and then this is our tangential stress so this will be 6000 pounds per square inch is equal to our P which is 62.4 pounds per feet cube multiplied by H and then times the diameter which is 22 feet and then divided by 2 times the thickness which is 1 half inches or 0.5 inches. Now notice that we have inches here and also here and so so what that means is we'll actually convert this one and this one. So first, let's try to cancel our units. Now since we have feet right here and feet cubed, this will become feet squared. And so now we'll convert feet squared into inches squared. So to convert that, we have for one feet, we have 12 inches. And then since this is squared, we'll also square this expression. And so now we can solve h. This will be 6000 is equal to 62.4 times h times 22 times this conversion. So 1 feet is 12 inches and then squared divided by 2 times 0.5. So solving h we have 629.37. So h equals 629.37. However, this is still in inches because we actually converted all of our units into inches. And so converting this to feet, we have 12 inches per 1 feet. This will become 52.45 and then feet. Now if you want to get your answer directly in feet, you can actually just multiply this by 12. 
let's go back and then here you can multiply h by 12 times 22 times 1 over 12 and then squared divided by 2 times 0.5 you will directly get this value so that's why this is 52.45 now this is just an alternative if you don't want to convert this now in our next problem we are to consider the actual triangular pressure caused by the water and so instead of uniform our stress distribution will be like this now in fluid mechanics this is the actual pressure distribution however the value of the highest pressure considering this triangular pressure this will still be gamma h essentially we will convert this pressure into an equivalent resultant force and so since this is triangular it will act right here this is our resultant and then going to the height the distance will be h over 3 because again if we have a triangle our centroid will be right here which is one third of this dimension and two thirds for this distance now our centroid is always nearer to the height because the area right here is larger than this area and so our centroid will naturally move to the right so here our centroid is nearer to this because in our triangular pressure this is the higher magnitude since this is zero right here now since our resultant force is not acting at the centroid then we can't use pd over 2t directly instead our equilibrium equation will involve moments now just to clarify in our example earlier the resultant of this pressure is right at the center since it is only uniform and then our resisting forces are 2 for tension and so we have a resisting force right here which is t and also here and so that's why our equation is just r is equal to 2t now for the purpose of similarity let's just change this one into f because this is what we used in our derivation so let's change this into f and then notice that this equilibrium equation is just what we used in deriving the equation for the tangential stress and so that's why we directly used pd over 2t and so going back in this figure we can't just sum up horizontal forces because our resultant force which we'll label as f it's not at the center so what will we do what we'll consider is the moment right here now since we don't want any rotation we can take moments about this point which we'll label as o and then the summation of moments should be zero and so we have f times h over three and then let's not forget our tension forces now remember that we have tension forces right here at the center of each wall so we have d and also here and so the moment arm of t will be half of h because this distance from here up to the bottom that will be h over 2 and so since we can only consider this as one force and we'll transmit that at the center this will become 2t this is just the resultant of these forces and since they are just symmetrically placed then we can just transfer that at the center and so since this is going outward the rotation it will cause about this point will be counterclockwise so this will be minus 2t and then multiplied by the moment arm which is h over 2 so h over 2 this is equal to 0 now to simplify our calculations we will just equate the clockwise moments to the counterclockwise moments and so we will have this equation now f right here is the resultant force of this triangular pressure now how are we going to get this resultant force recall that gamma is force per volume and so if we'll multiply this by m cubed we'll only have kn if we'll just use unit analysis however if we are to play with the formula gamma is w divided by volume and so if you want the weight or the force then that will be gamma times the volume and so this will be our basis now again this is our force so using this for f we have gamma times volume and so our gamma will be 62.4 pounds per feet cubed and then now we'll get the volume of this pressure uh, by the way since we already labeled this as gamma h let's just actually calculate the volume by getting the cross-sectional area and then we'll multiply that by the width and so let's just erase this one and then let's try to look at our triangle now the cross-sectional area of this triangle is one half times the base which is gamma h whichever you want to use h or gamma h and then we'll multiply that by the height which is h and then since this only accounts for this triangle only at a certain point we'll actually multiply that by the width or simply the diameter so this is times d now again this is our area for this triangle and then this is our width so let me just move this one and then we have h over 3 is equal to 2t times h over 2 however we know that stress is equal to force over area and so the force is equal to stress times area and so we'll change our t just like in our derivation now t will be the tangential stress multiplied by the area in which it acts now that'll be the thickness of the sidewall multiplied by the height so this is t multiplied by h this is our area while well, this is our stress and so we can actually cancel h let's just cancel this and also this and we can also cancel h right here 
because this also has an h so we will cancel this and then we are left with one half times gamma times h times d times one third is equal to two times the tangential stress times the thickness times one half and so this will cancel and then we have gamma h times d and then one half times one third that will give us one over six so this is divided by six and then here we have the tangential stress multiplied by the thickness and so now we'll be able to solve h our gamma is 62.4 pounds per feet cubed so we have 62.4 lb per feet cubed times h times the diameter which is 22 feet divided by six and then this is equal to the tangential stress which is six 6,000 pounds per square inch multiplied by the thickness which is 0.5 inches so this is 0.5 inches now notice that feet here will cancel so this will be removed and this will become squared and so let's first convert this into inches squared so that our units will be consistent now let's extend this line and then we'll convert feet squared. Now one feet is equivalent to 12 inches. And then since this is squared, we'll also square this one. And so this will cancel and also this one. And then this will become inches. And so essentially our resulting unit will be inches because this will become squared if we'll apply this and then this will cancel and then we are left with inches at the denominator and then we'll multiply that to the right side of the equation now let me just remove this and then let's solve h we have 62.4 uh, I mean 62.4 times h times 22 times this conversion which is 1 over 12 and then squared divided by 6 and then equals 6000 times 0 0.5 solving h we have 1888.11 so h equals 1888.11 however this is still in inches and so if you are to convert that we have 12 inches per 1 feet this will become dividing this by 12 that will be 157.34 and so this is our answer. Now to get this value instead of doing this, you can just actually use the height, assuming uniform pressure, and then multiply that by 3. And so if you will demonstrate that, H considering triangular is thrice the height, assuming uniform. And so our height triangular will be 3 times 52.45, because this is assuming uniform. Now this should give us this value. And so if we are to type this, we have 3 times 52.45, that will give us 157.35. However, the value here is not exact because we actually rounded up this value. If you are to use the exact value, then you will get this one. And so this is what you have to remember. Now again, you can just use this formula.